my grandma that we grew up going to uh, save wa save the water protests with my grandma and like save the salmon and uh, a lot of those kind of like pipelines and all that kind of stuff. That's how we were raised is to go and like fight for our indigenous rights. Like back where we're from, we actually come from a reservation of 200 people. But the thing is that our water is not drinkable. There's arsenic in our water. Um, there's a lot of like si like situations happening where we are from the Highway of Tears. I don't know if anybody knows where that is. Um, basically, a lot of uh, women are going missing. That's our territory. The, the Highway of Tears goes right through our reservation. So sometimes when we do these kind of discussions and people are like, well, you guys were, or if I ever Google myself, like the Baker Twins, sometimes you see forums and, the, and it's like, the Baker Twins, they had everything handed to them. And we're like, we came from a small reservation where women were disappearing. One of our friends was killed in high school, literally run over. It was, it, people think back home that, people get run out, like hit, and then they disappear. But this girl actually was found, like, on, like along, she was someone we went to school with. So we actually dealt with all of this kind of stuff. So when we are out there in social media and we have a big voice, we try to use it to create change, even though it might be dangerous to us in some situations. But I feel like anybody else that has a big platform that's indigenous, that came from the background that we came from, we should be using our voices to try to create change and, and through social media. So that's kind of one of our things is that we did come from a small reservation. Um, we do live in Los Angeles, but we also didn't forget who we are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we could just keep on going. <laughs> I know, I'm like, oh, I could just sit here all day. Um, so I'm gonna have a, a couple more questions and then we're gonna have some questions for the audience. You guys game for that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so share with us a little bit about some of the um, work that you've been doing in the communities with in some schools or um, youth groups and just share us a little bit about um, what you've been doing and you know, what's, what's brewing with some of that, if there is anything brewing. <laughs> Um, Shannon and I, we do talk to um, youth and communities, and even women. Shannon and I, we were not, everyone thinks we, just because we're models, we were the most popular girls in school, and, and we weren't. We were teased. We were beat up every day, we were teased, and um, we were kind of, we were the losers of the school, I will admit it. We were the losers of the school. We only, our only friends were each other, and I think, I think um, kids, and I remember even feeling this as, as a kid, and thinking, oh my gosh, like, my social life is so important. This means everything, you know? Being popular means everything. And really, in the end, it doesn't mean anything. It, and and um, I actually remember not having a voice. I remember being really shy. I never gave anyone eye contact. I always sat in the back of the room because I didn't like the teacher asking me questions, even about my schoolwork. And I would always sit in the back. I would. My, my eye contact was low, and I didn't even look at people in the eye. And it wasn't until after high school, Shannon and I, when we moved to the big city of Vancouver, um, <laughs> when we moved to Vancouver, Shannon and I were like, no one knows we're losers here. You know, we get to reinvent ourselves. We get to, I could pretend to be confident, you know? And it started with me, and this sounds so stupid, but it started with me smiling and saying hi to strangers. Like, hi, I'm Shauna, you know? So I feel like a lot of people think that some people are like kids are very outgoing, but usually it's because their family are very positive and teach them that through uh, social skills. But for a lot of indigenous people, I, I, like we, we come from a reservation where uh, up north, there's suicide rates are super extreme. We've had a lot of friends kill themselves, even at 13 years old. Um, suicide rates, there's a lot of drug problems. Um, there's a lot of issues in our communities, but I think, Sean and I, when we go to these communities, it's usually about self-confidence uh, workshops, because I feel like that's where it starts. Um, and it's also like a learned it, like, skill you have to learn. You have to learn how to be confident, and the only way you're going to learn how to be confident is actually to practice it. So Sean and I used to practice, and even going to the grocery store, I remember Sean and I were like, well, let's try to make some friends, or let's try to make some friends at school, and let's practice what we've been talking about, which is smiling at people, saying hi, how are you doing? And it was a big step for Sean and I, because we grew up, you know, one, we grew up in a small reservation, but two, my mom was 15 years old. She wasn't the best mom, so she was actually kind of verbally abusive. So when you're getting um, uh, verbal abuse at home and physical abuse at home, and then you're going to school and you're getting the same thing from students, it's hard to, in, in between all of that, to gain some kind of confidence. So 
So Sean and I actually didn't become confident. I can't even imagine me as, you know, even a 14, 15, 16 year old sitting here and talking with everyone because that, that it was not our persona at all. Um, but we had to learn how to do that with practice. So that's kind of what Sean and I do to different communities. Is we talk about different issues that we've faced, but also um, we do self-confidence uh, workshops. And I think that's kind of where a lot of things help, like help. We also do YouTube video, like we do uh, YouTube workshops and uh, modeling workshops too, as, as well with youth, because that's a really good confidence booster as well. Um. I, like I had like four or five more questions and you guys already have like covered most of those things. So I'm like, all right, well, come up with some new questions. Um, so you have a lot going on, right? You guys have uh, a whole social media um, space, gaming on social media, like you do that, modeling, and then your sort of political activism, social, social work stuff that you do. You have a lot going on. So what do you do to just maintain like being able to do all that? Like, what are some of the things that you do to help you keep you balanced or grounded or in this for the long haul? I mean, clearly you have a lot of energy and your guys are gonna like do it. <laughs> so I know that's part of it, but what, what do you do that just keeps you like solid in this? We talk to our grandmother on the phone every day. <laughs> I think that's probably one of the things. We're super close with my grandma. She pretty much raised us. She's 82 years old. 81 years old, turning 82 next year. Um, I think probably our culture and our grandma, even though we don't live on our reservation, we still talk with my aunts and mainly my grandma every day. Um, and we, if we don't talk to her every day, she makes, like, we hear it. <laughs> you know, she's like, you don't love me. We're like, we do love you, grandma. So I think probably that would be it. Um, as for like everything else, um, we don't really have very much time in the day to do anything. I feel like we stream five days a week from 7 p.m. until we get tired. And during the, the day... We stream on Twitch. On Twitch. Yeah. We play video games on Twitch. Video games on Twitch. And um, in the day, we're doing auditions, uh, a lot of TV meetings. We're actually... There's three TV shows that we're in the works of. We can't say what they are, but... Uh, for 2018. 2018 is going to be really busy for us, um, but we're going to still maintain um, our, our streaming on Twitch, our gaming, um, also our social media. We have we do a YouTube video every uh, two weeks, um, so we still kind of like are going to maintain that. But I guess probably my grandma, our grandma, is probably what keeps us grounded. I would say. And I think like Shannon and I, we we are very disciplined. We wake up no matter what. We always wake up in the morning, and we have a list of like what can we improve like this week what can we what can we do to um help our careers and what can we do to um you know be active and and um because i think that's one of the things is we're always busy we're always and the thing is that i feel like another thing a lot of people don't tell people act actors this that when you decide to become an actor um you are your own boss so Sean and I, we're our own bosses, and if we're not working hard, then we're not going to get to where we want. We're so lucky. We don't have regular jobs. We don't have, you know, we used to be uh, uh, bartenders, you know, five years ago. We were able to quit, or four years ago, we were able to quit that. So we, this is our, like, full-time job, us being social media, uh, on social media, being actors, being models, all of that. But the thing is that if we don't work for ourselves, then we're not going to work. So we also, maybe, in a, some, someone asked us yesterday, they were like, do you, how, like how busy are you guys? Do you guys have a social life? And the answer is no, we don't. We really don't have a social life, and it bothers my mom because she's like, "When are you gonna get a boyfriend? You know, you're gonna be dog ladies." She says this to me all the time. But I don't know. If, there's the cat ladies, and then there's the dog ladies. But I don't know if anybody like if people have native moms out there. They want you to basically like procreate like right away after high school. We haven't done that yet, so my mom's like wants to be a grandma desperately. So she's like, hey, can you please at least freeze your eggs? She always talks to me about this kind of stuff, which is kind of weird, but we don't have a social life. So I guess that kind of helps with our careers as well. <laughs> um, so what is it like to be gaming as women on Twitch? Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, what's it like to be gaming on Twitch? On Twitch, a lot of people don't know this. So Twitch is a, if, if you don't know what Twitch is, it's basically a streaming site. It's the third most watched uh, streaming site. The first one is called PH. Uh, has to do with adult stuff. The second one, I'm not going to say what it is. The second one is YouTube, and the third one is Twitch. A lot of people don't know that. It was actually bought by Amazon last year. So basically it's a streaming site where you get to uh, play video games and interact with your fans. 
So you're chatting with your fans as you're playing a video game. And the thing is that Sean and I have been playing video games since we were seven years old. One, we were losers and geeks in school. So the one thing that we loved after school is playing video games. So when we found out that we can actually play video games and interact with our fans and make money on Twitch, we were like, oh my gosh, this is like totally up our alley. The, the downfall of, a, of being a woman in gaming is one, 17% of streamers on, on Twitch are female. The rest are male. So it's a very highly dominated uh, industry. Um, you're gonna get male dominated. You're gonna get trolled. Um, you're gonna get really bad comments. Um, you're gonna get, like, not stalked, but harassed. There will be terrible blogs about you uh, because you're a female. It is a very sexist uh, industry, but I think that's changing. Um, Sean and I are used to trolls. So for us, it's not a big deal. Um, we have, it's not a big deal for us to- We can handle it. We can handle, like, you know, negative comments, yeah. you know. But it is, it can sometimes be difficult. I have, I'll admit it, I have cried on stream maybe once or twice, because um, sometimes, you know, we're still human beings, you know, behind the screen, up on the, on the screen. Sometimes we get 1,200 views a stream. Uh, sometimes it's only 400, sometimes it's only 300. Um, but we get, uh, you know, we have a lot of viewers in our stream, and I think it helps because they see two people on a screen. So when you are on Twitch, you scroll through, and there's different thumbnails, and people see a thumbnail of two people. So we're automatically gonna get views just because there's two people. But people troll us because they're like, there's no way these girls are gaming. They're gaming for money. They're not real. They actually don't play video games. We've been playing video games since we were seven years old. Or they think it's pre-recorded game. Yeah, or they, or they, cause we're pretty, I mean, we're not bad. We're not bad video gamers. So we get accused a lot of, of uh, recording video games and like, Oh yeah, they're definitely not playing the, like Destiny 2 right now. Where's your controller? We can't see it. So we get like, harassed like that. Uh, but we're kind of used to it. We have a thick skin. It is competitive, but I feel like the industry is changing a little bit. Um, but Sean and I are like happy doing it because one, even though we have a lot of trolls, we still have like tons and tons of success. Um, we now have, we come out with a t-shirt every month uh, for our fans. They ask for... We get to sell our merchandise, and our fans are very, very supportive. They buy our merchandise when we have it up on our site. Uh, they want the like latest limited Baker Fam shirts. So our fans call themselves Baker Fam on uh, Twitch. Uh, so our community there is called Baker Fam. Um, our we have we also have another community um, called on YouTube called Baker Fit or Baker Fit Group, which follow us for our five minute workouts that we release once a week. Um, we we haven't done those in a while. Um, but we we're cut, we start need to start doing that again. Um, but we have like the thing about about social media is that you have different groups of fan bases. Our Instagram, I have o over four almost four hundred thousand uh, followers. You same thing. Um, that's a whole nother fan base. So each fan base you have to treat differently. But our Twitch community, our Baker fan, that's like I have so much love for them because they're so supportive. And I think. One of the things that keep us going on Twitch is probably our community that we have because they're so supportive and it's so easy to play video games and play when you're playing with your friends because that's how they have And for those of you that want to get into streaming, it's, it's actually, it's never too late. You know, everyone feels like with any social media platform that, oh, like, I'm behind in the game. But Twitch is so new. It's so new. It's, it's only like four years it got, got, got bad by Amazon last year, yeah. and Shen and I only started streaming on Twitch a year ago. Yeah. Just to give you all a gauge of like how, when you can start, and you don't just have to play video games. If you are an artist, you can actually make paintings yeah. or draw paintings. Yeah. Yeah. You could even so like create cosplay on Twitch, where they create their costumes and things like that. Artists are like creative. That's the most like one of the most popular because a lot of people could see the process of you drawing and talking to other artists, beating. I've never seen a beating stream yet. I still would love, let's see some beaters. Yeah. I feel like that would be really popular. Um, but the thing is, like for creative, um, I talked to some of the artists that, are, that do creative. I'm like, so how did, like, what made you get into creative? And they're like, well, the thing is, me as an illustrator, it gets boring, you know, just drawing and like creating something. Uh, but when you have a, like a viewer, viewers there and people talking to you, it makes the work so easy where I could just like power through when I'm getting like tired of it I could sit down grab something else and my fans are like hey like would it be cool if you did this you know so he, they, they I feel like that consensus for like people that are, are in creative is they like to create art but they get to be with the community as they do it and it passes the time so who's the better gamer Me. <laughs> What's your favorite game? Uh, we have 
We have different favorite games. My favorite game is Destiny 2. Um, and I, I like Overwatch, uh, like, too. Um, Shannon doesn't, Shannon, I don't know. Okay, I used to be, I don't know if anybody watches, plays Destiny. No, Destiny 1 was amazing. Rise of Iron came out, amazing. And like D2, I'm not gonna hate on it. I still like Destiny 2, but it was so easy to get the power level. And if you ever know what Destiny is, you have to grind for your characters, put a lot of work into your characters, your warlock, your titan, or your hunter. And I feel like it was just Destiny 2 just came out and it's like super easy, so I'm kind of bored of it. So. My favorite game, oh, my favorite game. Uh, my favorite game right now is probably Fortnite. I, I don't know if anybody has played that. It's a brand new game, it's super fun. Um, you get to strategize and like play with other people. Um, it's, uh, that's my favorite game, I think, because it's a strategy game. And then my second favorite game would probably be Overwatch. Probably, probably Overwatch, yep. Questions from the audience? Anybody got a question? All right. Oh, <laughs> what was it like being on Slipknot's music video? Um, so if anybody watched it, um, it's funny because like we were like this just this past year when we go to like do uh, uh, workshops with youth, um, people aren't ex like the kids aren't excited about CSI or like super, like any of the TV shows we've been in, Blue Mountain State. They don't care. They're like, how is it like on Slipknot? <laughs> how is it like?